This week we're looking at anagrams in prepping data. So we've got two words on each row and we're going to try and work out if they're anagrams of one another. So the basic process that we want to do is we're going to split each of these words into individual letters. So one letter per row for each word. Uh, then we're going to count the number of letters in each of those words. And then we're going to, you know, match them up to word one and word two and say, do we have the equal number of letters uh, for each different type of letter? Um, so basically, are they anagrams of one another is what we want to answer. So we start off by assigning an ID to our um, data set because that way we kind of know which pairs are matching. So the way that we do that is we're just using the rank functionality in Tableau Prep. So we're just ranking on, it could be word one or word two, it doesn't matter, it just gives a kind of unique ID to that. And I rename that to be ID. Then we're going to go for our pivot where we get both of our words into the same column. Um, so then we kind of have doubled the number of rows by having um, a row for each of the words that exist. And we kind of define them by a column instead that says word one or word two in our data set. And then we're going to calculate the length of each of the words that we have because we're going to use a scaffold in order to break this down into individual letters. So um, our length function is as follows, um, where it's just a um, len of word. So that's how we do that. And then when we do our scaffold, the important bit here is that we have the greater than or equal to sign when we're joining the length onto the scaffold. So that's kind of saying, so we've got a length of four, for example, so we want the numbers one, two, three, and four to join to that, uh, to that word, and therefore we will be able to split it out into its four individual letters. So let's do that basically. So the way that we break it down to the different letters is we use the mid function, which is really useful. Um, we're saying mid and then with our word, go to the scaffold position in that word and only take one character back. That's how we're reading that function. So if we do that, then we can see that we get all these letters split out. And now what we definitely want to do is make sure that all of our letters are lowercase because um, with anagrams, we obviously don't want to take the case of the letter into consideration um, because depending on where the letter is rearranged to, you probably won't have the same letter at the start as at the end. So we just want to make sure that we've done that too. Now it comes to our counting our letters um, time. So we're grouping by our ID, we're grouping by whether it's word one or word two, and then we are grouping by the letter to count the number of rows associated with that letter. So for example, um, in word one, we have three Ps. So that's just an example of how that's working. Then we're just going to filter our data set down to word one and word two, just in kind of separate streams that we can then join back together. And the way that we're joining them is on the ID and on the letter. So our ID makes sure that we're sort of going to be comparing just that. If you remember our initial data set where we had um, word one and word two linked by the ID. So that's why we're joining our ID. And then we're joining on those letters as well um, so that we can see if their counts of the number of letters is the same in both word one and word two. And we're doing a full join here, not just an inner join. Um, so that where um, one word may have additional letters then we can tell and we can give an answer that no, this isn't an anagram of the other one because there are additional letters involved. So that's what we're going to do now in this clean step here. So we're just looking, we're just using this formula where we're saying basically, I haven't done a lot of renaming of the columns. So basically letter and letter one, that would be word one and word two's letters. Um, so if they're equal, which they should be because we've done a join on them, unless um, it's present in one word but not the other, and therefore one of these would be a null. So, but in the case where they're the same and where 
the number of rows and the number of rows for word one and word two are the same as well, then we would say that yes, this is indicating that it is an anagram. But obviously we're only comparing on a letter by letter basis at the moment, so we're not finished with that. But if these two conditions are not met, then it's definitely not an anagram. So that's how we're writing that calculation. Um, then we're just merging together our IDs um, because here we have ID and ID1. That's just where, again, we've had that issue where uh, the letter wasn't present in one of them. So we just want to merge those columns together to get rid of those nulls. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say for each of our IDs are the words anagrams of one another. And the way that we're doing this is we're grouping by the ID, but then we're taking the minimum value of the anagram because we know that um, the minimum value, if there's a no that exists for any of the letters, so if um, the number of letters is different for any of the different letters that appear in that word, then there will be at least one no in that aggregation and therefore it will always kind of pick up that no rather than being a yes. Um, I hope you follow that logic. Um, so then all that we have left are our no's and our yeses. We join that back to our very first clean step because that's where we introduce the ID. And then we have, if we're just joining on ID, sorry. And then we can just see that we have our final table there where we have our word one and our word two and whether or not they're anagrams of one another. And if we kind of just have a look at that, if I just zoom in on it, then you can see some kind of obvious ones like table and tableau definitely aren't anagrams, so we're quite happy with that. Prows and powers, yes, they definitely are anagrams. We're just swapping around a couple of those letters um, in there to make that. So our logic is working. We have the right answer. So I hope that that was useful for you and thanks for watching.